I think I have a mic somewhere. Can you hear me? Yeah, good. Uh, hi, nice to see everyone. Thank you all for coming. Uh, it's wonderful uh, to have so many folks come out and, and be online. Um, as we, as Neil said, start to come back into the real world and escape our houses a little. Um, I think I'm here to answer questions. Are there questions? Or uh, if, if you haven't met me before, I helped start the Flutter project uh, about eight years ago. Uh, we've been just trying to make developers happy uh, for a while, trying to make this whole, why do I write the same thing twice uh, go away, finally. And I think we've been reasonably successful. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, there's many developers. I think we're well over into the millions now, uh, worldwide on in a yearly basis uh, for Flutter and Dart. And we're just trying to continue to make things better. So do we have questions this morning or? I think we've started with some questions from the live okay. audience here. By the way. You want to pass the mic, Karen? Yeah, sure. Hi, um, this might be a kind of a naive question, but uh, was were there any trade-offs you found in terms of using uh, Dart uh, as a programming language behind Flutter, specific to the fact that Dart doesn't support multi-threading? Uh, I know that with isolates, there is a way to have uh, a distinct memory space for different processes, uh, but were you considering using a language that did natively support multi-threading? And if there were any trade-offs, um, were you able to kind of overcome that? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the question, which I, I think got captured by the mic, was uh, did we consider when picking Dart about the tradings in lack of multi-threading or limited multi-threading through isolates? Um, and I guess I would start with a little bit of history. So Flutter stems from originally being part of Chrome in the sense that we were uh, the, the rendering engine, right? So we took Chrome's rendering engine and we forked it and we stripped it uh, for parts and built uh, what we had hoped would be like a faster version of the web. That eventually got to a point where we felt like we needed to add things. And once you start adding things, you are no longer the web, or at least you're three years away from getting through any standards body and becoming part of the actual web. And so we then built, we started to add things to the C++ layer, but we tried not to add much and built everything up in, into JavaScript until we just hit a barrier where we just had too much JavaScript. At least on iOS phones, we could not get it to run fast. The, the, the JIT was not available at the time. Um, we also had no ability to change the JavaScript language. And so we went searching for another language and we tried lots, um, including I think Go and uh, I think, anyways, we, we, we tried a whole bunch of languages, ended up with Dart. Uh, and um, we did consider things like lack of, of multi-threading. And we have had, had uh, conversations with the teams about are there more advanced you know, multi-threading paradigms to use than uh, isolate execution? Um, but so far, it's just not been a blocker for most customers. If it is for you or others in the room, you know, we'd love to talk with you. We'd love to help you know, grease those wheels. Uh, but we've taken a very customer-focused, customer-driven you know, approach so far. So um, I think most people uh, know uh, Flutter for mobile and then more recently desktop. Um, but I see increasing interest with uh, Internet of Things. So we've seen um, some advertising, I guess, from the, the Flutter team of uh, being, you know, fluttering cars, fluttering smaller and smaller devices. Um, I'm intrigued by that as a maker. You know, when, when can I have some really small stuff? Uh, the big stuff is really cool, but small stuff is even cooler. So one of the my hopes with Flutter is that to take it to a new place, you never have to talk to us. Uh, and so we have seen Flutter. We talk about Flutter publicly working on five or six platforms, something on that order. But there's at least three more um, ports of Flutter inside Google that we don't talk about. There's probably at least 10 more in the outside world. Uh, you know, I've seen Flutter run on, as you mentioned, Toyota cars. Uh, we've seen it run on, on watches. We've seen it run on TVs. Uh, we've seen it run on all sorts of, you know, funny devices. Um, and again, the point is that we shouldn't need to be involved in that. Like we should have done something with enough open source and enough, you know, correct layers. I, there's more we could do to improve this uh, so that you can do that alone. Uh, in terms of going to smaller devices, 
we're probably not going to take it to a lot more anytime soon. We have our hands full <laughs> with a relatively small team and, and a lot of platforms to support. Uh, we came to mobile because that's where the developers were. That's where the big problem was we felt like to solve. Um, I had worked on the mobile web and trying to make the mobile web a thing for a very long time. Uh, so I, I don't think we're, we're, we're trying for a lot more small things from our team, but you should be able to take it to small things without talking to us. That'd be the goal. <laughs> so, we have a question from the online audience from Trevor Davis. Okay. Uh, he's asking how far along is Flutter towards the long term vision uh, in your opinion? Oh boy. I mean, I think. I think you ask that to anyone who's who's started a thing, and they, it always takes so much longer to get there than than you ever wanted to. Um, I think the thing we're most focused on, and maybe this is not directly answering the question, is is growth right now. Uh, you know, you mentioned that half the seats aren't full here, and and that's in a large part, I think, due to the pandemic that we're you know coming out of. But uh, there's just building a community, building an ecosystem like this, just takes so many people. And so right now we're just trying to uh, solve the problems that are, you know, blocking the remaining 95%, you know, of mobile developers or whatever it is uh, from adopting Flutter. Um, so in terms of how long are we on our, our vision? I think we got a long way to go. Okay. Uh, so you said you have a relatively smaller team, but you have your hands full. Uh, full with what exactly? So as I said, we take a very customer-driven approach. So um, we, particularly when launching a new uh, platform like we did recently with web or with, or with desktop, part of that launching process is to find N for a small number of N uh, key customers and make sure we get them all the way over the line. Uh, because my experience with software development is, is that the last 5% is really the last 95% and you just can't see it until you're there. Uh, and that's been the approach that we've taken. So what do we have our hands full with? Oh, oh. Um, we were just talking about text editing and you're going to have a whole talk on text editing. Like the, the world of desktop is so much bigger than the tiny, you know, you know, beachhead that we've occupied so far. And the same thing is true of web. Like we're not a general web framework. We're good for you know some set of mobile, you know some set of mobile-ish web apps, right? Um, there's just always more to do. Thank you. Sure. If that's possible. Sure. Happy to. Okay. Thanks. Sorry. You mentioned one of the biggest areas of focus right now is growth. I'm wondering what you think are the biggest challenges uh, the Flutter team would have to overcome in order to scale the amount of developers using the platform. Hmm. Um, so a big challenge is awareness, both inside and outside the company. I don't know if that's our biggest challenge, but it's something that I've been thinking about and working a lot on recently. Um, turns out when you build a thing over many years, uh, most people are not paying attention to you most of the time. And so whatever they heard four years ago is what they still believe, which is fine. Um, but things have changed a lot in four years and you know, helping everyone both inside Google and outside Google uh, understand what current data looks like so they can make the right decisions for their business is a challenge. Um, I think another thing that's been blocking growth is that we haven't grown the team much in the last three years. Uh, that's changing now. Uh, you'll see there's a ton of posts at flutter.dev slash jobs, and there's a whole bunch more coming soon. Um, and so that I think is also going to help. We just like, you know, I think we have half a person or a person working on, you know, Cupertino, which is all of the iOS widgets, right? We have, you know, a couple people working on Android integration. We have, it just, it, the teams are just so tiny to do what they're trying to do. And um, we're fixing that. Awesome. Go ahead. No, no, I, I'm just asking. Rick, I'm curious. What, um, what have you gotten in the oven what you, that your guys are working on? Um, what is, what is the thing that you're most excited about? What do you think is the coolest thing you guys are working on? The thing I'm most excited about. 
Um, so I'm personally really passionate about the web and making that good. That's not entirely in my control um, because uh, many of the things that need to change are we just need one more hook here or one more API here <laughs> from the, the web browsers. And so that's that's a game of articulation. Okay, these are the needs. You know, okay, can can you can you work with the standards committees, the people who are paid to do that? You know, to, to get that through. So that, I'm excited about the progress that I the slow progress I see there. Um, we recently engaged in the last year uh, in a process of rewriting one of our GPU backends uh, to get a, around an issue that we've had since the beginning, where um, the graphics library we use will compile shaders on demand which has been totally fine, but iOS doesn't like this because uh, on iOS, there's a multi-millisecond startup time whenever you want to wake up the shader compiler. And that changed a couple revisions back and that has caused uh, noticeable jank the first time you hit uh, a new shader. And so we have a solution and I'm excited to see that solution come into production. Again, it's, that, it's always that last 5% is the 95% of work. And so we aren't through that 5%, but, I, but I'm excited. Uh, and, we, you know, as always, we just have big, uh, interesting customers coming down the line. We're exploring in the game space a little bit. Um, yeah, there's just always so much going on. Right. I have another one from uh, the online audience. Is uh, product getting used in embedded systems? What are the products in which it is getting used today? Uh, yes. Uh, so I think it depends on what you mean embedded. So if you mean like system on a chip burned on, no, not to my knowledge. But if, you if you're talking about um, like Linux class devices and above, uh, yes. So again, Toyota is, is an excellent example. Uh, and Very Good Ventures, which was mentioned by others earlier, they're, a, a, they're, they're a, a big member in the Flutter community and they do a bunch of consulting. I know they do you know work in, including with some of these. Um, We've talked with various, you know, OEM manufacturers. I don't know how many of these are public, you know, who are embedding. We've seen it uh, in a, it wasn't a microwave per se, but it was like a kitchen appliance um, that, that's shipping. I don't recall the manufacturer for that. Uh, so I've, I've seen lots of it. I think Toyota is the biggest one. Oh, I guess the, there's an obvious one, which is the, the Google's Home Hub. All of those assistant devices, those are all Flutter. Every pixel you see. Um, I guess when I try to convince friends um, to check out Flutter, the prejudice is, oh, Dart. I don't want to learn Dart and this and that. Um, what do you think is kind of like interesting and what do you think people are maybe missing in like exploring things like Hydro, just like, ways to develop for Flutter where you could write in TypeScript or other languages. You know. um, so I heard two questions in there, one of which was, ah, Dart. Um, and the other was uh, things like Hydro and, uh, you know, TypeScript on top of Dart. So there, there are a ton of projects that take Flutter as a base layer and put something on top. Often this is done for code push, uh, you know, server template push or, or logic push something that we have not out of the box supported. Um, that is something that we're looking at, uh, but you know, it's not on the official roadmap yet. Just something we're sort of like trying to understand, why is this still a problem? Why does you know, 19 of the top 20 Flutter apps all use something like this and, and we haven't offered a solution? Uh, so that, that is something I, I'm personally thinking about. Um, but the, to get back to your, oh, Dart, uh, maybe prompt or question, um, we picked, we made in Flutter were for uh, technical reasons rather than market reasons or, or political reasons. And, and Dart was one of those. It's just like, it's the only language I know that offers a just-in-time development experience while also offering an ahead-of-time compiled, you know, iOS. It was needed for iOS so that we could go smooth and fast on iOS, a deployment experience. Um, I think it's basically just JavaScript or Java, like, it's, it's very similar to both of those, minus the prototypes on the JavaScript side. Um, and it has real types, you know, and real null safety, which allows us to, to do interesting things that I think some of these other languages can't. Um, but it is still something new to learn. So that is a challenge for, for some folks. Thanks for that. I guess what I'm wondering is, 
it seems like a lot of my friends are interested like oh if i can write in typescript mm -hmm. and i can still develop in flutter like okay that's an easier way to start like do you think this is something that will just be like more and more of a trend like kind of this decoupling of flutter from the language and like do you think there's interesting cons to that that maybe people are missing it's not just a um maybe I, I don't know where you draw the line between uh flutter and the language but to me they're very one and the same because we intentionally wrote so much of the framework in, in the language and in part, we chose that language because the previous language we're using javascript just couldn't support that volume of 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 we think about it sort of as user land um of code that said, we, we have worked with many other teams, in fact, who want to do a Flutter-like thing. Um, you know, there's another thing in the same space, I don't want to call one a copy of the other or anything, but like uh, Jetpack Compose, which is a, a great new interesting library from Google that you know, we have worked with that team uh, because there are many similar design choices. Um, and I think that's a healthy thing. Like I think part of my goal is just so that people don't have to write twice and can write with modern tools. And if they write in Dart or they write in Kotlin or they write in TypeScript, great. <laughs> the world's a better place. All right, we'll take one more from the online audience. Uh, I think this is a question that everyone in the community would love to know. Uh, what would you be excited to see from the community that the internal team can't work or can't prioritize right now? Um, a thing. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, what would you like the community to work on that the internal team can't work on to help with Flutter's growth? Yeah, I think the the first thing that comes to mind is honestly more things like this. Just like we're the the Devrel team is like five is level. You know, they can't go to everywhere in the world. Um, you know, and we just, as I said, there's, most people don't know we exist. It's hard to imagine that that, at least that's my perception. And so there's just so much just sort of education. It's not necessarily com convincing people. Like, I don't need to convince you to use, use Flutter, perhaps not this crowd, but like, I don't need to convince people to use Flutter. I just want them to have good tools to work with in 2022. So like helping people understand what tools are available in 2022, um, is something that I think the community can help with. And there's also just a, a deep, the second thing that comes to mind is there's just so many packages to write, right? That we're just not gonna write ourselves. There again, that's a tiny team, fewer than five people who does all the packages, you know, that come out of Google for, well, it, is, it does all the packages that come out of our team. There's a lot of other Dart developers at Google. Awesome. All right, so here's a, another one from our friend at uh... Dev Angels, uh, Simon. So, do you think we'll have the ability to send new display lists over the network? So, can we do server side rendering or other remote applications? I mean, Flutter is entirely open source. Somebody could fork it and try it. Um, many of the code push, like I'm aware of, I think at least three forks of Flutter that do code push. Um, and those are forks, not just even libraries. Um, so, somebody could fork it and try it. That's not something that's on my radar. It's trying to do. Uh, you know, server side. Oh, I see server side rendering. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was thinking more like X11. Um, I think server side rendering is interesting and clearly something that there's good solutions needed in this space. And like what we did with data model questions of saying there's just too many answers to this. And maybe we could have picked something sooner, but but I think we eventually arrived on letting the community come to some consensus and then helping endorse a winner, I think there may need to be something similar done with the, how do we do template push or logic push? Uh, so. All right, thank you. I think uh, this one is a follow-up to a, an answer you gave, Eric. Uh, you mentioned GPU and GPU shaders. Any plan on Flutter supporting 3D? So there's actually a lot of people using Flutter in otherwise with 3D as well. Um, I don't know what all of these are public, but I, I remember the Wallace and Gromit folks built an app that had a whole bunch of 3D components. And the way that, that most of these did is either overlaying a Flutter view on top of 
just another surface view, or we have a texture. Like we have the support, the ability to, to embed just a, a texture that you fill from something else. And then they wired up Unity to that uh, or, or some other system that is designed around 3D. Uh, you certainly could do 3D. You could expose a 3D. You could expose, you know, raw GL or something like that out of Flutter through Dart bindings. Um, but the rest of the ecosystem and tools and community just isn't currently built for that. So I think right now we're doing in a add a little Unity on the side kind of approach rather than adding 3D APIs to Flutter. So there was a, just an addition to the question as well. I think the interest was more about AR, VR. Uh, that's a good question. And I've received uh, several outreaches about this. And this is more of sort of like light 3D awareness rather than it is do a lot of 3D. I don't have a good answer. I think where the, the answer for this is going to come is from the teams looking at using, hey, can I use Flutter on my, you know, weird device? Uh, or uh, can I use Flutter on my, whatever they are, the, the HoloLens or the, I don't know all the, the various different. But I, but I think that's going to be led by someone else. Happy to support that though. You see some hands? Alrighty, so we have uh, lots of people coming for the summer. They're called interns. We love interns. Um, <laughs> and one of the things that always confuses interns when they're playing with Flutter and probably every other new dev okay. is uh, they learn about state management. And then there's a gazillion choices. Yep. They don't know which one to pick. Um, and it just confuses everybody. It, do you see that as a weakness of the framework or is that just way too many choices? And how do you help somebody learning Flutter to make the right choices or is there not a right choice? You get the point, right? Yeah. So I think the, the, the last question, is there a right choice? I think the answer in my mind is no. Like just data models tend to be so fundamental to an individual application that the right way to do data model for your application may just be very different from someone else's. That said, we made a strategic choice at the beginning to sort of throw our hands up and say, this is not our territory. I think there are other ways that we could have played that strategy card. Like I, I think you see other frameworks endorsing a specific solution, even if it's only works for 60% of cases as just a way of building consensus from early on. Uh, so, and then we instead built consensus around again, provider uh, as being sort of the, the most endorsed, I believe it's officially endorsed on our, on our website uh, solution today as a place for people to start from. Yeah. I don't know if I answered your question, but uh, I recognize the tension. I think we can have better on ramps in terms of teaching people things like provider to start with. Okay. I think you've probably heard this question multiple times, uh, Erica. Do you feel that Flutter Web is ready for production level applications? It really depends on what you're building. Uh, the web, you know, we talk about Turing completeness. I mean, the web, you could do anything on it. Um, and again, our strategy has been like when we came to the outside world, we specifically targeted um, design-focused consultancy shops, which is how we ended up talking to Very Good Ventures. They had a different name then. And how we ended up in the Hamilton app, right? Because we were looking for somebody who cared about that cost savings and also cared about the design focus. And the same thing is happening with the web too, is like really where we've started is like, oh, you could take your existing Flutter app, you press, press a single button and it works on the web. Right, that, that's a, a totally valid use case, but we're terrible for writing your blog, or we're terrible for, you know, writing a text-heavy SEO needing because we just haven't done that part. The web just there's so many different things you can do with the web, and we help you do the appy parts of it really well, and don't try to do the rest right now. I when I was an intern at Apple many 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 years ago. I remember the very first, uh, they had this SVP tour or whatever, 
where you talk to the, the the VPs and Steve Jobs led off the 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 tour and I remember very distinctly I was a much younger man then uh, how he talked about how the importance is all around saying no that you know there's always room for more yeses and it's all about saying no to make no you, you know, saying no to make room for the yes I'm sure I got the quote wrong and everybody but, but this was very much his point and it just stuck with me I don't think I say no well enough but Flutter we have to say a lot of no's um, in order to actually execute on the yeses. Any more questions from here? Uh, to continue on that, that um, the conversation of kind of like web and flutter and so on. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to pose a frame, reject the frame if you have a different way of thinking about it, but it's almost like flutter is this like open source game engine for apps. And it's kind of like mobile first and like working first. And it's kind of like web assembly and web things are almost like desktop first and kind of like working outwards from there. How do you kind of see this like convergence between these two things um, and like playing out over time? Yeah, I mean, the world is messy. So uh, things converge only partially all over the place. Um, you, you reminded me in that there was an earlier question about things I'm excited about. Wasm is the thing I'm excited about. I think I'm excited about it because it has this potential to like stop some of the language wars <laughs> in the sense that like, um, I don't need to be religious about languages. Like I, the WASM has the ability potentially, I don't know, of being a, a like a, a common intermediary target like you see with LLVM. And, uh, so in terms of how do I see it playing out? I mean, Flutter, as you correctly, we started from a mobile background, right? That was the problem we were trying to solve. The desktop web got shoved into a phone at some point, and we kind of called it the mobile web. I'm sure that's not generous enough of me, but I worked on that for a decade, trying to make it really good. And this was just a different attempt at that of, hey, okay, what if we start from only uh, mobile phone IME-based keyboards? Like we're right now teaching the thing how to handle a physical keyboard. And by that thing, I mean we're teaching Flutter how to handle a physical keyboard. Um, and how do I see it playing out? Uh, it's going to be messy. Uh, but I think there, if we continue to build fundamentally good technology pieces and we build them in such a way that you can put them together with other pieces, we will have built a foundation that people, lots of people can build on. And we maybe can move past this world where you have to write things five times in five different languages just to ship your darn product. Uh, okay, we have uh, six more minutes. Yeah. So in so much people approach this from the right once run everywhere approach, mm -hmm. like web apps are going to be the right once run approach and PWAs and WASM yeah. gives you that capacity. And it seems like Flutter also like really fits that. From like the decision making, like, do you see that as kind of they're going to like collide at a certain point? Like the idea is you, you write your thing in Flutter and that's the everywhere or, you know, is it going to be a web app? And then, you know, what's one's relationship to Flutter then? Uh, yeah, I, I, would, I would change the phrasing ever so slightly there and say, what I want is you to be able to write an amazing app for users. I kind of don't care what platform you go through to get to the users. And then when you're done with that, be able to take most of that and write a similarly amazing app for a different market of users having gone through a different technology stack. And the current system whereby which you have to go to an OEM to get their toolbox and then you cannot reuse most of the stuff you made there. Just, just fundamentally bothers me. <laughs> and so I'm trying to provide people a better toolbox, as you said. But the oh, uh, thing we often say is we're Unity for apps, or we used to say that more than we do now, now that we're, we're actually a thing. Uh, yeah, it's like the game industry figured this out uh, uh, decades ago. <laughs> and I think that. It, it is hard, it takes a lot of people to do it, but it's not that hard. And I think we've demonstrated you can get, I think, really quite close. And now that we are hiring again, I think we can get really close so that you can make really good, compelling experiences for whatever platform and specific affordances you're targeting, but then also take the bulk of that and go somewhere else. So it's not right once, run anywhere per se, it's right once and then reuse 
people tell us sometimes 97% of their code, you know, when they move to another thing. Are there any exciting things you haven't talked about that you think help really accomplish that in the long term, like such high reusability? Uh, it's it's 100% of what we do is open source. <laughs> so uh, it's really hard for me to remember what we have talked about, what we haven't talked about. The only things that we don't talk about are customer interactions, because some of those are private. Um, but exciting things, um, yeah, I'm mostly just excited about you know staffing the team appropriate to the the success that they've grown into. Um, when we last hired for the team, we were a fifth the size in terms of like usage within Google or within the world. And uh, as you can imagine, there's a there's a lot that comes with having that many customers. Um, a little, maybe slightly off topic, not sure, but um, I keep noticing that Firebase integration is sort of on this, not completely supported or something. Like I see all the examples of all the languages, but mm -hmm. I don't see Flutter there. And uh, since I'm using Firebase, it, mm -hmm. it'd be nice just to have that be more of a top level thing, but I don't know. I think there's a lot of good news coming there. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think we have not worked with the Firebase team as closely as we could have. We have fixed that and we are now working with them much closer. Um, and I think you're gonna see a lot of change in the next coming months and year around integration there. But I will wait for them to tell those stories. There's uh, one from our friend in the community, Scott. <laughs> I mean, again, we're 100% open source, so you can just watch the patches land. Um, but I use the Mac, and uh, I, I don't have a Linux box active at the moment, but I use the Mac one all the time. Uh, there are lots of things. We have been intentionally very conservative in what we call even beta or alpha or 1.0. And uh, so we have been focused, again, on getting customers over the line. Right? When you see somebody in the Apple App Store with a production-ready app, okay, you know it at least works for somebody, right? You know, they can create a thing. Okay, I think we can have a, another person do that. So we're focused so much on that. Thanks, Eric. I think we're almost out of time. Thank you so much. Pleasure.